be sleepy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Awesome. How are you guys doing? Alhamdulillah. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi wa ba'd. Rabbi sharah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqtatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbi zidni ilma, Rabbi zidni ilma. Rabbana la tuziqulubana ba'da iz hadaytana. Wa hab lana min ladunka rahma inna kanta al-wahhab. A quick note as to what Ibrahim was mentioning. Um, and he was mentioning that a lot, of, a lot of the men, they don't like to be in the kitchen. In my house, we have a, actually an opposite dilemma. My wife locks me out of the kitchen. So many times on the weekend, I am dreaming of this amazing dish that I'm going to make. And she is dreaming of not being in the kitchen for the, week, for the weekdays that she's been cooking. And I get up on Saturday morning, and I'm like, I'm going to cook this. And I arrive there, and I find the kitchen door locked and a water outside for me to drink. So, you know, alhamdulillah, everybody's got their challenges, I've got my challenges, alhamdulillah. So, we are here to talk about material versus immaterial, dunya, akhirah. That's the topic for today. As I sat there two nights ago at 11 p.m., and my WhatsApp, my Instagram, my Facebook started going berserk because of what took place in New Zealand. I sat there hashtagging, twittering, responding, talking, and all the way till 12.30 until sleep and slumber took over me and I slept. And I woke up next morning only to find myself again doing the exact same thing. But then what happened was life kicked in. Breakfast time came. Time to go to work came. School time came for us. Time to drop off the kids came. So we got busy with this world and we for a few moments in our lives we forgot about the pains of the brothers and sisters in New Zealand. And every now and then throughout the whole day we were reminded of the pain of our brothers and sisters by somebody saying something to us. But then I really sat there as I was here at the booth trying to help up, set up the booth over there at Ikna, and I sat there and I said to myself that, do I really believe in the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said that Muslims are like one body? When my head aches, the rest of the body is affected. My brothers and sisters over there are still affected by that pain. But am I still affected the exact same way if that person that died in New Zealand's mosque was my own brother? And the question to me, unfortunately, and a confession is no. I don't feel that pain. And many of us don't. So that led me to change all of my slides and presentations last night to come up with something that was more relevant with the paradigm today. And that is that we, we came in this world with one purpose. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We have not been created. Allah says, I have not created the jinn and the ins except for one purpose. And that is that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then I asked myself, that part of my worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that I believe in the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those hadith should have a conviction in my heart. But I don't have that conviction. We don't have that conviction. Innama al-a'malu bin niyat does not have that effect on me. So what is stopping that? Where is the obstacle? So every single one of us we're faced with a challenge that I am over here in this dunya and my end result is that I'm going to meet my creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we all agree on that? We all are going to meet that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no doubt about it. But in that journey, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for us many, many obstacles. And today, we're going to talk about some of those obstacles. We're going to talk about one of those obstacles. Because we only have time for one. 
So, there are four major obstacles that every single one of us faces on our journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's look at the first one. People, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have fights with people. <laughs> you're going to have unpleasant moments with people. You're not going to get along with people. People are going to hurt you. You're going to get angry. Dunya, money, money, money. Can't you see? And the rest of you can complete. Those of you that are of my age, they know this song. Right? It was very famous when I went to high school here. Right? So, dunya, money, car, marriage, all of these things, kids, distracts me. It's an obstacle for me on the path to getting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh. My nafs, my own soul, inside, and shaitan. Those are the three major, four major obstacles that every single one of us has that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid out for us on our path to the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today we're only going to talk about one. Which is, some of you have already seen it. Dunya. I still get, need to get used to this. Q. So dunya is an obstacle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for us. So many of you might ask this question, if dunya is an obstacle for me to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then why am I sent in this dunya to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get to Him? Like if dunya is an obstacle, then why send me, send me to an obstacle so that I can get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So let me, let me explain that a little bit more. So, dunya, it's an obstacle, but if, you, if, if I quantify that a little bit more, it's actually not the dunya that is the obstacle, it's my desire, my connection with dunya which is an obstacle. It's, it's my heart's connection with the materialistic world that is the obstacle. You can have a Ferrari, absolutely fine. But then when you cry, if you lose that Ferrari, Ferrari that is the problem. Owning a, a yacht is absolutely fine in our religion. But when that yacht crashes in the sea and you, be, you, you become sick, you, be, you have depression because you lost your yacht, that is the problem. So it's not the dunya which is the problem. It's the desire of this dunya. And the desire of this dunya is a sin. Having this desire in our heart for dunya, for material world, is a sin. And many of you are saying, oh my God, what is he talking about? So let me quantify that for most of you. And I take it straight from the verse of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا Whosoever desires hayat dunya this life and the trinkets that it has, the beauty that it has. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نُوَفِّي إِلَيْهِ مَعْمَالَهُمْ We're going to pay you in full for all your efforts that you did to gain whatever you wanted to gain in this dunya. You're going to get a full payment. Don't worry about it. Your paycheck for this dunya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the effort that you get, did in this dunya is going to come to you in full. Absolutely no problem. Moreover, وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يَبْخَسُونَ And don't worry about it. There's going to be no short changing. Allah says that you worked for dunya. You had desire for dunya. You did everything for dunya. You woke up for dunya. You slept for dunya. You got married to get, get dunya. You had kids so that you can have more dunya. You went to university so you can gain dunya. All of that. You were driven by that? We'll pay you in full. You're going to get your full paycheck. But, وَهُمْ لَا يُبْخَسُونَ And there's going to be absolutely no shortchanging. Listen to the next part of the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا النَّارِ For such people 
who are fully engrossed in the desire of dunya, for them, there is nothing except hellfire. Nothing except hellfire. Listen to this verse. And, then, and, and the, you know how Allah has described over here, He says, الَّذِينَ, These are the people, لَيْسَ لَهُمْ it's, There's nothing for them except, i.e. negation of every existence, of every possible possibility, doesn't exist for the people who have intrinsic desire for this dunya. إِلَّا النَّارِ Except fire. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَحَبِطَ مَا صَنَعُوا فِيهَا Everything that you did in this life is all lost. No value for it. وَبَاطِلٌ مَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And all the person's efforts that he did in this dunya are worthless in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, am I saying that you cannot have money, you cannot become rich? Am I saying that you can't go to school so you be educated and have a good life? Am I saying that you can't have children? Am I saying that you can't get married? Am I saying that you cannot buy a house? Am I saying that you can't buy a car? You can't buy a Ferrari? Am I saying that you can't go to a nice restaurant like Moe's Barbecue and have a hundred dollar barbecue for two people. I ain't saying that. Let me clarify what I mean. You see, you can have dunya all you want if you disconnect your heart from it. Once we remove the love of dunya from our hearts, Dunya is all for yours. It's all for your taking. Because it's no longer in your heart. It's in your hands. And it's all yours. So the problem is what? That connection that we have with dunya. So many of you over here are going to ask a question. And, and, and I'm sure if I was to do a show of hands, although I can't see any one of you, except the ones in the front. Like most of you would raise your hands to the fact that we have this problem. True or false? Raise your hands. If you think that there is an intrinsic, we all need to work on that. Now, since we need to work on that, how do we fix it? First things first. We admit that we have a problem. Because nobody can fix someone and nobody can fix a problem if the person in front of me if the, if the person that has that problem, we do not agree, we do not admit, we do not accept that there is a problem. So we have a problem. As a community, we have a problem. You know how I know we have a problem? When I go to the masjid and I give khutbah and I come outside and I see two brothers arguing that one of the other's brothers, when he was opening the door, scratched his car. A little bit. And there was a whole thing about it. No, I gotta call the police. And then there was people in the masjid, they were like, Akhi, this is just a small, Wallahi, this is a small scratch. No, I gotta call my insurance company. It's a brand new car. I paid X amount of money. That's exactly when you know that you have a problem. You know when you have a problem? When you're sitting in, your par in a parking lot, Waiting for your wife to come back from the mall. How many of the guys know what that means? Right? When you, as the husband, you tell your wife, Listen, honey, I got some important things to do. You go to the mall and take care of everything. And I am going to take care of the car. Very important. And you sit there in a parking lot. And then across you, you come across a person who happens to be a hypochondriac a neat freak, and he gets off the car, and then he goes back, checks the car, and then he takes a, a rag, and he goes, <sighs> oh, that looks good now. Okay, there was a minor blemish on the car, but it's all fine. 
we know that we have a connection with dunya problem then. So how do we fix it? You go today and sell your car. So those of you that have cars, you sell them. And if you have a Mercedes, you give it as a zakat to the masjid. Right now. Can I get some water on the stage, please? So, the, the solution to that is zuhud. For the millennials, minimalism. Right? So I just want to explain that. Because they're going to be like, what is zuhud? Zuhud is Matt Davila. How many of you know Matt Davila? Oh my God, you guys, are you guys millennials? Matt Davila. How many of you know Gary Vee? None of you know Gary Vee here? Really? You guys are millennials? Anyone knows Gary Vee here? You know, okay, there's, there's one uncle, he's like, ah, it's me, right here. I used to take him to his office. Now, minimalism or zuhud? Now, before you have this, this, this image in your mind that I'm asking you to sell your car and I'm asking you to get into one thob or one, one hijab and I know how traumatic that could be for the sisters, subhanAllah, like one hijab. You know, hijab is to sisters what tie is to brothers. I made that connection. Because, you know, any brother that I saw wearing a tie, mashallah, if you ever go, mashallah, he, uncle has a tie, right? He's like, he's like, weren't you there moments ago? You were. What happened? How did you? I didn't see you move. I'm like, I, I'm tripping. My brain is like, my left side is working with the right, and there's something's happening here. Too much dunya up there. Got to get rid of this. So zuhud is not getting rid of everything you have. But zuhud is freeing yourself from everything you have in the house. So that it doesn't control you. Jazakallah khair. Just one. So it does not control you. Just one second. <clears throat> so what do I mean by zuhud? <laughs> so we want to start practicing zuhud in a manner that we divert this, this irada, this desire, we di divert this desire from dunya towards worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because see, our heart can only have one desire. Dunya and the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are two opposites. They cannot exist in the heart together. So, the, the percent, oh there's a red tape here. So the percentage of dunya that you have, the more dunya that you have in the heart, the less room you're going to have for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of you can feel that? You don't feel the salah, right? You don't feel that connection. But then the more room you make for the ibadah, the space for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by removing dunya from your life, by removing this connection, this desire of dunya from your life, the more you do that, the more connected you're going to get. And I'll give you examples of this. So, there are three levels of zuhud. True, false. You guys don't know. Most of, maybe some of you do. That was a trick question. There are three levels of zuhud. First level is you get dunya, you're happy. You lose dunya, you're sad. But where is your zuhud here? Your zuhud is that when you lose dunya, you don't go to a bank and rob a bank so you want more dunya. Right? Because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want me to do that. When you get lots of dunya, when Allah gives you a lot of wealth, you don't say, you know what, I'm going to go buy this yacht and I'm going to do this, you know, MTV style music video. Right? Because you're like, I got dunya, man. I can be on a yacht and I can have all this that I see on TV. Because you know that Allah won't be pleased. So that is level one of zuhud. Level two of zuhud is flip it. When the person gets dunya, he is extremely sad. He is sad of the fact that now he has a lot more responsibility in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is sad of the fact that, oh my God, I am going to be held responsible on the day of judgment for all this dunya and he doesn't want that. By the way, am I supposed to go with the time that is on the stage here?
I, I, bro, I, I didn't study sign language. I'm going, I, I'm pacing my speech based on this timer here, correct? Okay. He said correct. Can you clap for him, please? That is how you get extra 20 minutes. <laughs> Just kidding. So, level of zuhud number two, when you lose dunya, that person he loses, when he gains dunya, he gets upset, he gets sad. When he loses dunya, when money leaves his bank account, when he becomes less rich at that particular point, he becomes extremely happy. Because he knows that now he can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there's more room in his heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the next level of zuhud is when existence of dunya, i.e. you get a Ferrari and you lose that Ferrari, has absolutely no effect on you. There's no effect on you on that. You lose it or you have it, yastawi, adamu wujuduha aw adamuha. That it's exactly equal for that person, whether he has money, whether he has Mercedes, or he doesn't, it's all the same. What happened to my timer here, bro? All right. Did you guys know that six out of the ten people who were granted the glad tidings for Jannah, those people, something's happening to the timer. Four minutes left. What happened? Where did the two thumb guy go? Six out, of the, six out of the ten people who were given glad tidings to enter Jannah, they were millionaires of their time. Abu Bakr, once upon a time, a qafila, a caravan, arrived. When that caravan arrived into Medina, the roads of Medina trembled because of the size of the caravan there was. And there was a lot of people, they went. No, this happened in Makkah, sorry. So a lot of people, they went. The kuffar of Makkah, they went to Abu Bakr. And they said, Ya Abu Bakr, we are going to buy this for twice the price. He said, There is somebody who gave me a lot more. Then they went and he said, Ya, ya Abu Bakr, we will give you three times the price of whatever you have. He said, There is somebody who gave me a lot more. He said, We will pay you four times the price. He said, There is somebody who has paid me more. And he said, They said to him, Abu Bakr, We have always known you to be a truthful man. Why are you lying to us? There's nobody in Makkah that can pay more than four. He said, Allah Jalla Jalalu has paid me ten times. And I give all of this caravan and all of its wealth in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he donated all of that. So that means what? He had nothing. Similarly, when the time of preparing a battle came, Umar radiallahu anhu came with half of his wealth. Abu Bakr came with all of his wealth. When he had wealth, when he had to give wealth, all of that in the eyes of Abu Bakr was equal. He was from the category of three. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes our hearts from the people of the category of three, Zuhud, that it's equal to us. Whether dunya is given to us or taken from us, we're all equal. Two and a half minutes. Should I embark on this point? I think I should. Now, I won't have a lot of time to explain this point, but I'll, I'll, I'll get into this quickly. There are four things that I want you guys to remember about dunya. Number one, how many difficulties this dunya has. There is not a person that is sitting next to you that you know that is on your WhatsApp, on your Instagram, that does not have troubles in this dunya. Everyone's got their troubles. Number two, suratu fanaiha. You've seen so many of these basketball players. They become millionaires and then what happens? They become bankrupt. You get it quickly and you will lose it quickly. And the people that you are going to be competing with to gain this dunya, those people, khissatu shuraka'iha, the, the quality of the people that you're going to be competing with is extremely low. People that have lost their souls, they have sold their religion, their values, they don't own anything. They, they are just after money. And lastly, how little there is that you can get in this world. How much are you going to get? How much are you going to get? 
half of the world? But what's going to happen then? How long are you going to have it? Dunya, out of the four phases that every person has, you know, when Allah created the ruh, and then we were in the belly of our mother, and then we were in this dunya, and then we're going to be in Jannah, in, in our grave, and then we're going to be in Jannah. Dunya is the shortest time period that you and I have amongst all the stages that every single one of us has been to. So how much are you going to gain? And that is why our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and I end with this. Can anybody tell me what that picture is? Shout it out if you know what that picture is. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, if this dunya, all of you are looking at the picture, and listen to this hadith now. If this dunya, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was equal to the wing of a mosquito, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have given a single non-believer a glass of water. And this is what we are fighting against. All that we run after is that wing or even less that wing. Like the wing is not even equal to everything that you exist that exists in this thing. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He grants us the true love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He opens our eyes for the true path so that we can connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He open, opens our hearts so that the ibadah can take a bigger space and the love of this dunya can slowly dissipate from our lives. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائل المسلمين فاستغفروا فإنه الغفور الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته